hear us okay give us a thumbs up if you can hear us Woo yep first time made it live yep thank you welcome yep cool yeah normally our uh we do lives every other week and last week would have been our time for live but we was out of town we was in Ohio at the Cultivate Show, which is a horticultural show, looking at some new varieties and things like that. So we didn't make it last week, so we're filling in tonight. And yeah, everybody's coming home. Yeah, good deal. We got to go see some of our customers. We got to see some of our customers last week in Ohio and uh, had a good time. It was a long trip, but we uh, we made it glad. Good getaway every now and then. Good to be home. Good to be home. Got to see the grandbabies. Yeah. So next week, I'm going to be gone. Not next week. Week after next. Is it week after August? Yeah. I thought it was next week. Not next Tuesday, but next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not this coming Tuesday, but next. That's Two weeks, I'll be in Iowa for uh, looking at some vegetable trials up there. So. Looking at new soon? We're looking at some trials. We're trying to some varieties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe we'll see. So it's always trials for some reason or another in our industry seem to happen in July and August. I guess that's a good time. Most things are matured up north for that. And we'll get to see them and see how they're doing and see if we want to add them to our line. At the Cultivate Show, we saw lots of um, container gardens. Yeah, container garden still seems to be very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And the trend is, is container garden. We actually seen a container cauliflower, a mini cauliflower, which is really neat. I've never seen anything quite like that before. But it, the plant doesn't get no bigger than this, and then it makes a nice little mm -hmm. mini cauliflower. Yeah. Personal size. Yeah, a lot of miniature tomatoes and miniature peppers, a lot of those. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen a cauliflower before. Anyway, it's always good to see some of that new stuff that's going on. And you know, in the horticulture industry, I guess like anything else, things seem to trend. And the trend for the last two or three years has been urban gardening, container gardening, small space gardening has been the trend. So a lot of the breeders have kind of went toward that. And uh, that's what we're seeing a lot of. Mm -hmm. It's thundering here. Thundering here. It's been flooding here. For the last 30 minutes. So yep. if you hear thunder going on, yep. or if we lose connection, You've got some we went three days without any uh, rain, and I, this jumped back on. So we started to dry it just a little bit, but uh, hello from Missouri. Yep. Yeah. All right. So tell us. This is what we want to know. We're gonna start out with this now. So for my fall garden, I'm planning on planting ambrosia corn, peas. Uh, excuse me, cow peas. We're gonna plant some uh, some squashes and cucumbers because we love to put it, pickles in the fall also. And we're going to pour this tomatoes, corn. I mentioned corn and tomatoes. What are you going to plant in your farm? Let us know. All right. Welch Farm, North Carolina. I ordered a heart yesterday. My question is what is the difference between the old green stick? one bolt plow and the newer black stick with two bolts so we had problems with the the old one because the top part of it's cast and we have problems with the casting castings are you're about to think of the past there's no very few casting places in the united states now and the quality is really went to nothing so we switched over from that and went to the two boat two boat system and it's uh it's thicker the plows are thicker they're more durable, and the only difference is you have to use two instead of one. We think it's a better design. It takes up a little more room on your toolbar there, but uh, we don't have to deal with castings, which is the main thing. Castings are just a nightmare. They're very inconsistent, and some of them would break because they would have these hairline fractures in them, and they would just break for no reason. So they weren't as durable as we want to be. That's one reason we got rid of them. Rid of them excuse me. Mark Turtle. Hey, Mark. Montreal, Canada. Ooh. That's way up north. Way up, way up north. Way up north. Sheila Burwell. I'm in zone 7B. When should I plant my fall brassicas? We're going to talk about that. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday on Robo Road, we're going to cover all that. So check in with us Thursday night. And, uh, We're going to go over by zone. By zone, exactly when you 
because you plant water. So then we get the uh, little teaser there. I think you should plant the seeds sometime in August. But check out our River Row show. We'll go into great detail on that. PRN, PRN, have you ever froze corn on the cob or just cut it off and then froze? If so, did you blanch the whole ears? We have done it on the cob in the past, and that's just not our favorite way to do it. We did it when the kids were younger. I find that it doesn't last as long as those that, that you cut off. But when I did do it, I did blanch it and then put it in the freezer. When the I can't remember last time with the corn cob. It's been a long, long time. Yeah, kids are nothing good. wrong with it. It's just not out. It takes up too much room in the freezer, yeah. in my opinion. We so. have a small freezer, kind of intentionally, so I don't put so much in it, and that's just not something I take up our freezer room. Mm -hmm. Alan Stanett, my fall squash is dropping flowers with no chance of produce. West Kentucky Zone Seven. Yeah, make sure you get pollinators. They'll drop the blooms off if you don't uh, you don't have pollinators. Make sure you get pollinators. Sometimes the plant will just stress out and throw them off. But if your if your plant's not stressing out, make sure you get something to pollinate them with. To zoom one, what tool is the easiest to use to snip cattle panels? Or can you not? Yeah, I got a pair of bolt cutters that I use. Uh, the little hand pliers, like you would cut wire with, it's not strong enough to do the cow panels, but I got a, a handle for years. A pair of bolt cutters, they're about yay long, and that's what I've used to snip them up. Bolt? Snip bolt cutters. Bolt cutters. Mm -hmm. John C. Field peas are in the paper recently as a great protein source. Mm, absolutely. Yep. And we love them. Grow in the fall. Man, we love them. Love them. Hey, Tony. He the one our red hot room. Yep. Drawing last week. When picking roasting ears on field corn, do you wait till the silks turn brown like sweet corn? Yes, I do. Same exact way you would do uh, sweet corn, Tony. Exact same way. Got to be careful because if it gets too far along, it's not going to be good to eat. But just as soon as it gets what we call that milking stage, that's when you need to pull it and roast it, roast the ears. Check those kernels. Mm -hmm. Make sure that milk comes out. Gary Bales, what would be a good cover crop for the fall in South? Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, I feel like uh, any of our summer cover crops is going to do fine for you down there. The, if you plant them in the fall, they're going to go well in, the, in November for you. Sorghum, sedan grass, even black oil, sunflower, uh, sun hemp if you got away, attractive to mow it, buckwheat, uh, brown top millet. Sorghum, sedan grass is a good one if you don't have a lot of equipment. All you got is, is a tiller and a lawnmower. So we should name grass be the one I'd go with. Unless you're trying to pull the pollinators in there. If that's the case, go with buckwheat. What about that? The cilia. Yeah, that would be a good one in the fall, too. What about that? But that was, yeah, that would be a great one. You know, super beef for cilia. It's not going to do good in hot, hot weather, but it'd do good in the fall. That's a good one. I need to plant some of that. You brought that up. So much to do this and I haven't done. Kim Smith suggestions needed for clay soils on AB. I keep adding potting soil. Yeah, another one you can add is gypsum. Gypsum will help break up those clay soils too. It's, it can be used as a soil amendment on clay soils. So good quality compost is going to work wonders for you there. And also you can add some gypsum in there. Organic matter. Organic matter, yeah. Any kind of get there. My preference would be to compost. Mm -hmm. David Lucas, okra, peas, turnips here in central Arkansas. Has it rained in 30 days? Temps over 112 days in a row. Mm. Wow. Mm. David, feel your pain. We went through a spell like that. Three weeks. Three weeks. Whew. We went through a spell like that. Uh, in June, the that started raining here, but it's tough to, uh, I don't believe turnips are going to make it. Yeah, turnips are just, that kind of heat's just not going to make it. 
Yeah, okra, if you can keep those alive, they'll be all right. Your peas will be okay. But, you know, I mean, excuse me, turnip just does not like that kind of heat, but I do feel your pain. It went from not raining for three weeks to raining every day. Every day. Yeah, I don't know how much we've had seen, but a lot. Mm -hmm. Pound of Goshen. Have canned 64 pounds pints of Mrs. Hall's salsa recipe this summer. Best dad blame salsa ever. Thank you. <laughs> we we would agree. Yeah. We ate some, was it today? Yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. I've done that recipe for like 12 years and kind of tweaked it. So. Mm -hmm. We had stuffed peppers this afternoon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Grilled stuffed peppers. Grilled stuffed peppers. Trish Lawson, my family, oops, JB, hey there, I'm chiming in from New Zealand. Ooh, all right. Welcome, JB. Yep. And I guess uh, down there, you would be, your your season would be different than ours, probably. Is that right? It flips down there? <laughs> I can't say. I don't know. I know South America does. Yeah, Australia. Would flip. Australia would flip. So they, they they would be in wintertime there, correct? I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. Trish Lawson, my family loves speckled butter beans. They are vining with blooms, but not too hopeful with the heat. Think I can plant again for fall. You know, ours. I'm assuming those are the running butter beans. Yeah. Trish, if those are the running butter beans, keep them fertilized and keep them watered and just let them be. What's going to happen is they're going to throw those blooms in the heat, but keep that plant alive. And, and treat them for rust, and in about September, you're going to start putting yeah, them back. Don't give, up on don't give up on them making the fall like crazy. So, yeah, mm -hmm. just keep them alive right now. As soon as it cools down, some they'll load back up and make another crop. Janie Bray, is it too late to plant another crop of Christmas lima beans? Zone 9A of Cala, Florida area. Thanks so much for all your help. I think, I think you may be just a little bit early. So I would wait probably till next month to do that. Excuse me, I think you'll you'll make a good crop this fall, but I do think it's a little bit early on those. Promise, what is the date? Today's the 24th. I would wait till around the first of August to do that. Jonathan Hancock. We have ambrosia corn, cream 40, squash, cucumbers, tomatoes on the menu for the fall. For my onions plots, can I plant super B facilia and cut it brown mustard together for a fall cover crop? Ooh, I don't know that I'd mix them together. I would uh I would probably plant those separate. I don't know, I wouldn't do a cocktail with those two because I don't know that they go on both mature at the same mm -hmm. time. You don't want your mustard bolting on you and you don't want your facilia to bloom out. You don't want to have to extinguish it before it blooms out. So I don't think I would plant those two. Both of them are wonderful. The cutting it brown mustard's gonna do really good for your name too, but I don't think I would plant those together. I'd plant them separately. JB said, yeah, seasons the other way around in New Zealand. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Nailed that. <laughs> Laura L, I'm still getting great production from my house jambalaya okra on the 9A. Can I plant more or is it too late? Mm -hmm. Thanks y'all. Nope, plant some more. It'll make all the way in the fall. And you're, I mean, excuse me. Frost, and you're going to have frost first of December. So yeah, I just I got some jambalaya like that here, and uh, yeah, I would I would definitely plant me some more. Hey Will. Hey Will, what's up, dude? I'm in the gray area between short day and intermediate day onions. I planted short day onions last year, and they did great. I planted some every week. To stagger them, I ordered some of the intermediate day this year, as well to try with the idea I could plant everything at once and they would come off at different times. <laughs> Do you think this will work? Thank y'all uh, from Dixie Meadows. Let us know, Will, but no, I don't think it will work. But let us know, <laughs> let us know how, how that experiment goes. It has to do with the daylight, the, the length of day and daylight. I, don't, I think it's still going to, I think they're going to come off differently. I uh, like uh, I don't let it, let me know let me know I don't think it's gonna work but let me know. PRN PRN how many days does it take for tillage radish to grow to a reasonable size to be viable as a cover crop? Is it forty five or sixty days enough? Yeah yeah it's enough they'll grow pretty quick 
They love cooler weather, so don't plant them in this heat as soon as the weather starts uh, cooling off. For here in zone eight, it's going to be October the 15th. It's going to be your ideal time to get them in the ground. They'll grow off pretty quick. You know? And you'll be amazed if you've never planted before what kind of uh, radishes they'll put on there. And you can eat those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've seen them in the grocery store mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Pamela Roden, I went dumpster diving behind Lowe's, found a lot of broken pieces of drywall. Here it's good for garden. Is it true? Yeah, it's a calcium source, so you can put it around your peppers or your tomatoes there, and it's gypsum is what it is. So you can put it around that and uh, water it in and let it go down, and, and your roots will take it will up. Will it decay on its own anywhere? It will. You know, it'll kind of fall apart, but you may need to wet it a few times. It may, I tell you what you probably want to do, if you can't crush it, crush it up or beat it up and try to break it down as much as possible before you apply it, it'll be fine. Some people complain about the adhesive that's in there. I really don't think that's enough problem to, be, to worry about. So, yeah, it'll work. I'd much rather use that than I had some people like to put tums out there. I think you're a lot better off to use sheetrock than you are tums. Thank you, Morning Wood. Yeah, hit that like button. Yeah, if you would, hit the like button and uh, we'd appreciate that. Like and share. Hey, Randy, he wanted one of our drawings. Yep. I couldn't pronounce his last name. <laughs> so, Pansky. What pickling cucumber do you like the best and just suggest for the northern Oklahoma? Uh, so we got a new one that we're going to be bringing on for this fall. We just got it ordered. Uh, I would suggest a Monetius type pickling cucumber. And I can't off the top of my head find a Monetius type. Get a website for it there. Yeah. What was that last one? It's trying to be good. Anyway, we've got two new pickles. I'm mean, excuse me. We've got one pickle, one slice of cucumber coming on for next year. We'll have them in stock later this year. We're really excited about it. It's going to be part of the Hossinator series. And these two cucumbers, both of them are going to be monoecious types, which means that you can, uh, they have male and female flowers on the same plant. And they're going to have a longer. I don't think that's more. I think that's coffee. Look at Max Pack. I don't know if I don't got Max Pack. Look at Clips on. Clips. Yep. Ganoecious. Yeah, Clips are a good one, but it is a Ganoecious, so you'll need to make sure you plant all the seeds in the pack. That's a good one. So the one we're going to be bringing off for the Hostnet series is a Monetious. Oh, uh, Eureka was a new one. Yeah, Eureka is a good one. This is Monetious. Yeah, Eureka is a good one. All right, so I'll give you a little bit of uh, between the Ganesius and the Monetius. The Ganesius is going to load up more fruit early on, so it's going to give you a heavier crop to start with. The Monetius types are going to give you a more steady harvest over the period, the harvesting period that Ganesius is on. So if you're if you needed a big crop up front. The Gynecious would be the ones to go with. If you want a lower harvest set of them, the Monetius are, are better for that. And the two we're going to be in are both of our Monetius. And what's so ex exciting about those two varieties that we're going to add is they have an awesome disease package to them. They're downy mildew resistance, powdery mildew resistance, so, so we're excited about that. Tanya's Townhouse Garden. Do I have time for a second round of sun sugar here in Michigan? Mm. Zone so 6A. Hi, y'all. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. I would say, <laughs> I would probably, uh, if you can put it in a container, you might move it inside, you might can, but I think it's going to be, that's going to be pretty iffy there, Ton. I don't know if you're going to have time for that. Grace Outdoors 417. I just want to say thank you for doing these videos. My wife and I have learned so much and it's really helped us in our garden. Well, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our family, and we appreciate you, and it's our pleasure to help anybody as much as we can. We, we enjoy it, and believe you me, we learn as much from you guys as y'all learn from us. Mm -hmm. Cody Jolly, planted fall tomatoes and peppers today, all seeds from Hoss. Thank cool. you, Cody. Yeah, so we got tomatoes coming along, but our peppers, we normally don't plant a fall properly. No. I was making all 
our peppers usually last up until the first frost. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I added some micro boost and some 2020 to mine yesterday. Pumped them up. Pump them up, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're still looking good, but I don't think I fertilized them maybe once this summer. Mm -hmm. And they're all in containers. Yeah. Trish Lawson, my purple tom tomatillos. Yeah. Have tons of blooms and no fruit. Been like this for two, three weeks. I've got six plants. Do you think the heat is the culprit? I wouldn't think so because tomatillos love the heat. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know. Maybe they're stressed in some other way. You normally have to have more than one plant, but you got six plants that so you can take care of that with the pollination. That's a good one there, Trish. I don't know. Just make sure that they're not stressed in any way, in the, whichever it might be. But they normally they love the heat. All right. Oval and Wolf, the sun and record high heat has fried my garden. Yep, I got shade cloth. It does help. I'm going for a very productive fall garden. So I will tell you this right here. Last year, we actually made a lot better fall garden with these spring gardens. So, yeah, a lot of times if you have those weather patterns that come in and destroy your garden in the springtime, you can make it for it in the fall. We had a great fall, mm -hmm. fall harvest last year. Pamela Roden, I planted pumpkins the end of June. Is there enough time to get any? Zone five. Woo. 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 It's going to be tough. I don't know. It's going to be tough, Pamela. If you've already got them planted, keep them baby long, keep your fingers crossed. Maybe. Maybe. Next year, I plant them a little bit earlier than that. Carrie Coward, I've never planted many determined tomatoes before. After watching your videos, I'm loving my garden with them next year. Thanks for me. Thanks for helping me understand them. You Thank are you. welcome. Thank Carrie. you, Carrie. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they work really good in a lot of situations. We seen some determinants that was performing well in Ohio last week. Mm -hmm, we did. Mm -hmm. Gardening Jay, I've never planted my hall screen blaze beans are coming up well. I planted in July 4th, only got de got 19 out of 40. Hmm. That's unusual. Um, what zone are you in? And that was probably not a good time to plant them. However, it shouldn't have anything to do with the germination. But if you're anywhere close to where zone we're at, 9, 10, or 7, Plant beans the 4th of July is not a good time to plant them because they won't normally make uh, when it's real hot, hot. That shouldn't have anything to do with germination. Send our customer service a, uh, an email explaining the situation. We'll send you some replacement seeds. How about that? Big Titan 27. Where is the tomato taste test this year? Come on, man. <laughs> we, uh, we did a, a small one. That we, we didn't record. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we didn't do the full fledged tomato taste test this year. Uh, next time. Next time, yeah. Our bad. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Did our weather? There we go. Uh, Somebody must have said it was blurry. Yeah. Where is that darn good always hiding it? <laughs> uh, it usually don't appear on our lives, but if you want to see what it looks like, it's down here beside me. So we got a little giveaway we want to do this evening. So we have some of these squash right here, which is golden zebra zucchini. We've got nine packs, so we're going to send three packs of these to three different people out there. If you're one of the first three to answer in the comments what the name of our dog is. If you can name our dog, we're going to send you three packs of this golden Now, it's the first three we see, which may be different than what you see, depending on the internet, where you're yep. at, and how fast it is. Yep. Yep. So, Carrie's going to... Watch the comments and record these <laughs> first three. <laughs> All right. I've been 
Darren says, I've been reading a lot about biochar. What are your thoughts on it? That's a good question. I actually ran into some people at the uh, Cultivate Show last week that was selling biochar and had an interesting conversation with them. Biochar is, is good. It does certain things. It's not a cure-all for no means. Think of it as a huge sponge. When you add biochar to your soil, you're adding something similar to what a sponge is. It's going to soak up any nutrients and hold them. And also, it's going to help remove contaminants from soil. So if you've got a very high salt content in your soil, your soil's been farmed conventionally for a long time, or you may have other contaminants in there, or you have a very low organic matter in your soil, biochar is an excellent choice to amend your soils with there. It, it within itself has no nutrient in it, no nutrients in it. It just has the ability to hold nutrients when, when you put them out there. So it is it is good if you need it, but this uh mm -hmm. didn't have any Everybody knows magazine. <laughs> it didn't have uh it didn't have any nutrients. Oh it's nice tank. Yeah. Uh, Paul Tank left us about a year and a half ago. Yeah, we missed Tank. Yeah. But we love our magazine. Yeah. Katie got it, yep. Katie got I think it. she was the first one. Yeah, we had we got three Big Titan 27 got it. Let's see who else got it. If you would, you people that, uh, let's see, Big Titan 27. And oh, one more. Yep. And Katie. So send your shipping address to CUSSERV, C U S T S E R V, at hallstools.com and we'll get that shipped out to you. Thank you for participating. Thank you. There it is, cusser at hallstools.com. Yeah. Yeah, we got some exciting stuff coming on next year. Just give everybody a little teaser what we're talking about new seeds for next year. We got some herbs coming mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a mm -hmm. lot better selection Medicinal. of herbs. Medicinal. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Medicinal. We've got a... Uh, a bell pepper coming along. It's going to be in the Hoss Native series. Of course, I mentioned earlier. We'll we get to name it. We'll get to name it. Mm. And we got a slicer, cucumber, and a pickle cucumber mm. coming. So we'll, have, we'll have contests to name those? Maybe, maybe. we got to figure all that out. Oh, yeah. Cool. Jeffrey Pearson, new gardener question. If you plan to save seeds from heirloom tomatoes, Am I limited to planting only one variety of tomato to prevent cross pollination? Yeah, I think you can look up and see what the uh, the what's the word here? I went for how far you need to plant them, not worry about cross pollination. But yeah, you can you can look it up and see how far you have to to plant them so they don't cross pollinate. Tomatoes are pollinated by the wind, so you don't have to worry about the bees uh, moving the stuff around. But yeah. And just to clarify one thing, you don't necessarily need heirloom tomatoes, you just need open pollinated tomatoes to uh, save your seed. All heirlooms are open pollinated, all open pollinated are not heirlooms, but you can save the seeds from both of them. Darren Malone, I've been reading a lot about biochar, what are your thoughts? We answered that one. Hopkins Hill Farm, this is in Zone 7. We just ordered five pounds of Blue Lake Bush beans. We hope to have an abundant harvest this fall. Good choice on Blue Lake Bush beans. Uh, zone 7, yeah, I would plant those babies probably sometime around the end of August. I think we'll be loaded up with Blue Lake Bush beans. Hmm. Carrie Tower, can you do a video about the west, best way to set up, set up drip tape on raised bed garden situation? I'm going to try to get it set up for next spring. Yeah, we're working on that. Yep, yep. Carrie, we're working on that. In fact, in my office right now is a good bit of uh, material that we've got in sample irrigation stuff. We're working to put together a drip irrigation kit for raised beds. And He's uh, going to try that online. Mm -hmm. And then we're so going to do some excited. videos on that. Yep, we've got some exciting things coming along there as well. Joe Hack, I'm in Arizona growing cabbage and cauliflower and and which variety would you recommend that would serve as green beans too? 
Mm, well, you, no. Uh, I recommend Red Ripper if you're growing strictly for a cover crop. Oh, man, that's a tough one right there. I would probably go with one of the, something like a zipper, maybe, if you were just going to snap them. Or would you go with a small bean like a lady cream? Well, so he's got his green beans. Yeah, he wants just to uh, snap them as green, yeah. green beans. Probably one of the smaller ones. What about the lady cream for him, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yep, so go with one of those. If you're doing strictly cover crop, the red rippers nearly impossible to be. And they do make a good shelling bean. But I don't know if I'd want those as a, as a snap bean. I'd probably go with something smaller. Lady Cream 40 sounds like a good one to me. Yeah, answer that one. Hopkin Hills Farm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah. Sarah Hope. Recently got a wheelhouse and oscillating her attachment was just wonderful for this new gardener. Can I compost the tremendous abundance of gross Florida weeds or shall I physically remove them? Yeah, you can compost them and theoretically if you do it right, those weed seeds are going to be dead because of the heat and the compost. Now if you're not real good at composting them, I would not put weed, uh, seed, weeds in there that are seeding out. I think you could be asking yourself more problems with that but yeah, if you're good at it you feel comfortable that your compost bin is going to heat up enough to kill those weed seeds sure if not yeah i'd, I'd probably do away with them cheryl wright is there a seed viability time limit on the seedless watermelon seeds will i have time to plant them in oregon zone 8a Ooh. Mm -hmm. Because you put them and store them to next year? Oh, yeah, you can store them to next year. You can put them in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag and store them to next year. I don't, you should have time, but it's going to be close, uh, Cheryl. It's going to be, I'm talking about it's going to be right down. If you have a late frost, you're probably going to get by with it. If you have an early frost, you may get stung. Take the chance there if you want to, but it's getting, uh, it's getting close to cutoff time on plant watermelons for fall. Gary Bells, have you had coyotes that eat watermelons and how could I prevent them from eating them? Yes. We do have coyotes. Coyotes? Coyotes? Isn't that what we saw? Today? Yeah, we had one. We got run over down the road uh, this morning. Yeah, coyotes are, is a big problem around here with watermelons. Oh, uh, I don't know what the answer would be for that besides shooting them at night time. I don't know. Coyotes are a tough one. And they'll just take some like one bite out of them. They'll just make a mess out of the watermelons. I remember when I was a boy, we had a watermelon patch and the coyotes just tore them up. So yeah, I, I feel your pain on that. I don't I ain't got a good solution for it. Chris Powell. Hmm. Hmm. Can you follow watermelons with cantaloupes the next growing season? Uh I would not. I would I would swap out with something else. I would try to keep my rotation a little cleaner than that, if possible. I would go with something in a different family. Knee deep in the woods, hi friends. How's the new merch coming along? Talking t-shirts here. <laughs> we're still clearing out some old inventory, so we're working on that. We got big plans for that. Big plans. Big plans for maybe later this fall. How about that? What kind of merch would you like to see? I want some women's shirts. <laughs> that was not nice. Laura <laughs> uh, L, I had some morning glory go crazy in my garden. I hate this stuff. Took up at least a quarter of my small garden after moving it. Do I have to be careful about what I plant behind them? Thanks so much. Uh, that watermelon patch was covered in morning glory. Yeah, it was this today. morning, yeah. Um, I don't think you got to be worried about what you plant behind them. You just plant something that you can keep cultivated. If you got morning glory bag, you probably don't want to plant some that's going to have a, like a vine tendency to it because it's simply going to be hard to get there and keep the morning glory pulled out. So just keep that in mind. B leader, hey B, when will your elephant garlic be in? We hope it'll be in in September. I'm waiting on an email back from the supplier. Promise to get back with me first of the week and let us know exactly, but we're hoping sometime in September.
Still funny. Huh? Yeah, Boom. Somebody says, yes, please women's shirt. See, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Women tank tops. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love me some tank tops. Carlene Jackson, will frost hurt pumpkins, planted jack lanterns and pie pumpkins? If they mature, it actually won't hurt the pumpkin, but it'll kill the vine. They have to be matured out. Hmm. Paula Reed, our silver queen corn is shooting up two additional stalks off the main stalk. They look like suckers. I've never seen anything like this before. Is it common and should I prune them off? I wouldn't go in there and prune them off, but just for next time that you plant your corn, when it comes starts coming up, keep it peeled, keep the dirt throw, soil throw to it, and that will help uh, keep it from sucking some others. Sometimes, for some reason, or other, it's worse than other times. If your corn stresses any when it's real small, sometimes it'll do that. But don't worry a lot about it. Just keep it keep it healed, and it should be fine. But healing early on will help prevent that. Don Lester the third just finished picking my G90 sweet corn plot, and I was happy the first time we're actually going to crop corn. Now I'm thinking of pulling a tarp bag that's been covering. Oops. 50 by 75 plot for a year and planting a fall crop of bodacious sweet corn. The area has not had anything growing there for two years. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's good. I like bodacious. Oh, so you're going to plant corn behind corn. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I do that. Uh, if, you, if you ain't got any other choice, you can go ahead and do it. But if you have any choice to rotate the area, rotate that corn to a different area, I think you'll be better served to do that. What is the best heat tolerant tomato? I'm gonna give you three. Hossinator, Florida 91, and Homestead. Florida 91 is a good one. It was developed by the University of Florida to get heat set tomato, so that's a good one. So those three there are the, uh, the three I normally recommend for a good fall planting. What do you have planted? I have, I, for regular sliced tomato, I've got Florida 91 Hossinator, and I've got some new uh, cherry tomato called Super Sweet 100. It's not a new one, it's new one to us. So I got some of those tomatoes. Hmm. All right, Snow Fuller says, Hi from Australia. Do you liquid fertilize your seedlings and trays before you transplant them out? Middle of winter here and our seed starting for summer begins next month yes we do we put a lot of liquid on our uh snow and on our we do it weekly we'll uh, we'll, we'll use a, what we call a hose cipher and we'll put our fertilizer through our wand and when we uh, water our plants we do that weekly put that liquid fertilizer on there Trucker 77, I have a pH of five and a pH of seven in the same row within 10 feet. <laughs> what should I do? The row is about 45 feet long. It's the same way on the whole row. Uh, can you actually tell the difference when you plant a crop? Some of the, it'll be a, have a weak area in there. If that's the case, and you're sure that you've got that difference in pH, you could get you some pelletized lime and add to those areas there which you've got the pH at a five. But I would make sure that I marked it off well and I didn't apply it where it didn't need to be because you can cause yourself some big problems there. But you could go in there and try to fix those areas by adding just a little bit of line. It's unusual to have that much variation with your pH in that small of an area. Jamie Bray, I planted some teddy bear sunflowers. They are beautiful, but I do not think about harvesting of seeds. I'm assuming it's just for cut flowers and pollination. Yeah, I don't I don't know if teddy bears are open pollinated or not. I don't think so. Yeah, it is mainly for cut flowers and mainly for cut flowers. It's not really known for a uh, a seed type sunflower that you'd roast. We have some though. Yep, yeah, I can name them. Yeah, we have Just a couple. Let me know. It comes when you tarp an area, how long do you leave it on? 
Man, that's a good one right there. So what I normally do is I use the tarp to work into my rotation. So if I've got a plot that I'm not going to need for four months, I'm not going to leave the tarp on there. Well, I guess what you're asking is what is the minimum amount of time you can leave the tarp on there. And it normally runs anywhere for about four weeks for me. So I put it on there in about four weeks. It seems to be in good shape after that. Now, one other thing you can do is you can pull that tarp back, let those weed seeds germinate, for a couple of days, leave your tarp back, and then put your tarp back on there, and that makes make sure you get all those weed seeds. So, that's your question: three to four weeks. Hopkins Hill Farms. We have a huge demand for Cherokee Purple Tomato. Is there a hybrid that will give me more resistant to disease rather than growing the heirloom? Hopkins Hill. Have I got the answer for you? So we've got one called a purple boy, which is exactly what you're looking for there. It is a hybrid variation of the Cherokee purple and has great disease resistance to it. It's very prolific and it's going to make a wonderful substitute for you for that Cherokee purple. And you cannot tell the difference in it without looking at it. Now on the on the purple boy, you gotta make sure you keep it sucker to get the size of the tomatoes there. I grew it last year. That's an excellent choice for you right there. Purple boy. Knee deep in the weeds. Did you plant your Cherokee pumpkin seed? And yes, get enough seed to sell us whenever the time is right. Cherokee tan? Did you even Yeah, we have some Cherokee tans. Yeah, I think we have some what? And we did plant those mm -hmm. and harvest the seed. Yep. Startled Dope Wagon Hollow Homestead. Is there a way to figure out how many bean seeds to plant to get the bushels we need? Oh, that's tough, America. Cause you, you're, you're, everybody's harvest is going to be different, so that would be tough. I, you might could Google it, see if you can find out something. Somebody's done some research on that. We have not. Mm -mm. No. Um. You know what else we've been doing around the clock? What's that? Oh, yeah. So I got me a new dehydrator. Um, was it last week or week before? It was week before. Week before. I've done onions, which that was uh, kind of disturbing in the house. Now I've done peppers, and now this week we've been doing figs. Yep. It's all of, night long. Well, it, machine <laughs> it takes about fourteen hours to dehydrate figs. Mm -hmm. It. I did not anticipate that. It took me quite so long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the guy, the trucker 77 with pH problem will go. He said, yeah, the plants are a lot smaller. Um, yeah, so make sure you mark off that area that you can add that line to. Mm -hmm. I think that'll work for you. Sorry about that. I get caught you, up on that. You I know, I got caught up on that. My mind was still working on that pH problem. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Anyway. I'm going to lost my trash on that. The figs. The figs. Got figs going. So the first time I sliced them in half, and it took a little bit longer. Um, this last time, I kind of diced them, and I think it's doing a little bit better. Thank you. Yeah. It's quite a learning curve there. Now, mine is not a freeze dryer. It's just a dehydrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite the little cookbook that came with it is not quite accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Jerry, he says, my corn's growing great. Can I plant? Oh, no, we've already answered one in the same spot. Yeah. Can I plant corn in the same garden bed? Otherwise, I have no choice. If you don't have any choice, plant it back in the same spot. But try to put you in another garden spot next year so that you can do some rotating there. All right. Well, we're about ready to wrap her up. What are you guys planting in the fall? All right. Let's wrap it up. That was the last question. That was, that was the last question. Uh, All right. We're going to wrap it up and get out of here. we got to get down to the house before I get soaking wet. All right. Thank you all for joining us now. Get outside and get dirty. Get something going on. <laughs>